I'm going to give everybody an update on this channel of what's going on with Liberty Mutual because it's beyond fathom. Um, in 2012, a girl hit my car and she was on her cell phone. Um, and if you go into my older videos on this channel, you can see the video of the car damage. And typically, she would have had the right of way because I was taking a left and she would have been going straight. But because she ended up being on her phone and my car had gone almost all the way into the turn, the location of where she hit my car dictated that it would have been her fault. Um, and Liberty Mutual is such a dirtbag company. And they ch if you Google them and you see all, oh my God, the history that I've done on them in two years, they're just, they're so bad at trying to get out of claims. They tried to play the, you know, she has the right of way rule, except for the fact that there were three phone, there were three cell phone calls made back to back to back, which um, were actually brought into court and they demonstrated that that caused the accident. So the court ruled, the Commonwealth of Massachusetts ruled that this accident was her fault. So I was not surcharged, and I've never, I'm, I'm like one of those, what you call step nine drivers, I don't have any tickets, I haven't had anything happen, I'm not responsible or anything, I'm like a really good slow driver, and I was mortified with what she did, and also she fled the scene, by the way, she didn't even stay so that the police could actually see how she hit me, she drove off, and she was still on the phone like this, talking away, and she never put it down. And in court, Liberty Mutual had their attorney con her into perjuring herself under oath to lie about what she did at the accident to try and not make it her fault. But the Commonwealth had already reserved, uh, removed the surcharge, and then the court had to agree with that and find her liable for this accident. Now, Liberty Mutual hired this very sleazy attorney named Sean McCarthy, who's young. I think he's under 30, has a few years of law experience. He works at Brown, Black, and Geller in Boston. Um, and that man submitted false figures into the court um, to try and undervalue what the car was worth, what I would get paid for by Liberty Mutual. And that is insurance fraud. When... A, when an accident happens, insurance companies are bound by law to pay you the replacement value of the car. They don't get a say. If I mean, if your car was only worth two thousand, you don't get a four thousand dollar check. You get a two thousand dollar check. But what you do is you plug everything into the book value, the mileage, the condition, if there's any prior damage, scratches, or whatever, and the Kelly Blue Book value breaks it down into levels. It would be if it was a trade-in, if it was the cost to replace it and get one on a dealer's lot, or if you're going to sell it yourself. So you have to be paid the, the amount of money that it would cost to replace the car yourself if you don't have a dealer's license, which almost everybody that drives does not. So they can't go by that wholesale figure, which is the lowest figure. They have to go by the blue book value that would have cost to buy it back at a dealer. So this lawyer was so sleazy and underhanded, and he thought he was doing like such a good job to get his check that he cut the payment in half of what the value of the car was in order to try and save Liberty Mutual money. But that automatically puts him into the capacity of committing a crime because you cannot underpay a claim in insurance fraud. Now, a lot of people, you know, they just settle and they don't fight it and whatever. But if you want to go by the actual law, an attorney isn't even allowed to do that. They have to give you what it costs to replace the car. So when victims get screwed like that and they get a really seedy lawyer like this guy, a lot of times they just don't appeal it, they let it go, um, they take half and they just suffer and whatever. And that's how insurance companies get rich and that's why they hire dirtbags like, like Sean McCarthy at Brown, Black and Geller. 
because that's what they will they'll take claims in volume 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 in order to be bullies and and put down the victims and play games and lie to the judges and do all that. And they will do that at a lower fee so that they get case after case after case after case. And they don't care about what happens because most of the people just end up letting it go because they don't have money to appeal it and they don't have another lawyer and they just take that they got screwed. Um, but by the law that's on the books, they cannot do that. They cannot engage in any portion of what underpaying a claim is about. Their job is to settle it on the value that it has to be settled for. And that is determined by the Kelly Blue Book value or another company that gives the value of what it costs to replace the car. So if I walked into a dealer and found like almost my exact car with almost the same mileage and almost the same condition, and I can print that out, that can also be used as a guide for what I get paid from Liberty Mutual for replacing my car. So when I went to court for the part of my bodily injury claim, Liberty Mutual defaulted on answering their demand letter. They had 30 days under Massachusetts law to file an answer, and if they don't file that answer, I had sought in my complaint that I be paid triple damages. And despite my making phone calls to Liberty Mutual, they did not answer the complaint, which put them in default. So that means that they lost already. Before it even got filed in court, they had lost. So they had had an attorney 20 days after that expired contact me and say they were going to filing this answer. And I just laughed going, are you guys on glue? Not only has 30 days expired, but like anything that you wrote in this is irrelevant because you don't get granted any extension when they've defaulted and they didn't answer. And if they didn't retain you, even when I called them in the duration of the 30 days, that's just negligence on their part. So then I filed it in court. And that particular attorney named Tom Sutcliffe from Prince LaBelle, who had sent me that letter, he wasn't even the attorney that answered once it was filed in court. So when you go to file it in court, there's 20 days they have to answer it because they get served by the sheriff. A completely different attorney, which was this the same attorney from the part of the auto body part, a, he didn't even file for an appearance. He just entered a, a, an answer when he, the other attorney didn't even withdraw, saying they weren't the attorney anymore. And I'm sitting there going, is Liberty Mutual like on glue? Are they this crazy? So his answer can't even be admitted in court. For one, he, he didn't have himself as the attorney on record. He didn't file for an appearance. And the other attorney hadn't filed for a withdrawal. So his pleading couldn't even be heard by the court. On top of that, there can, so I filed a, a motion for a, a request for a default, which the court in Framingham did not give me. And they should have. By law, they would have had to. And they um, they didn't give it to me, and that goes all the way back to the blackmail of whatever happened. And they shouldn't have done it because by law, they have to have filed a, dis a dismissal of the case and a default because nobody entered entered on the half behalf of Liberty Mutual. And they couldn't have done it anyway because Liberty Mutual al already you know, didn't answer the demand letter. So no lawyer really wanted to take it. So then the Liberty Mutual pressured these these lawyers to like, hey, one of you guys go in there and try and see if there's anything we can do to get this case still going. And they sort of sleaze their way into it, even though they can't do it and it's unethical. But because I'm not an attorney, the court was breaking the rules of the court to try and let them have an attorney when they didn't have one. Um, so then um, I filed an, a motion for summary judgment to just end the case, which I thought the court would finally do because it, it, the pleadings were late. They were filed wrong. Every It was, it was so, so crazy what they were doing. I'm sitting there going, oh my God, who on earth is this bad of a lawyer? 
and the court wouldn't rule on it. And it was a new judge that had taken the case over, and he didn't have all the facts of the background, but he was trying to catch himself up. And in the meantime, um, the case went on, and um, nothing was really done for a few months on the case. And then all of a sudden, it came to the fall when we were supposed to have um, a, a meeting. Oh, and the court never even sent out a tracking order, which is the stages of litigation that tell you all along the way there was never any discovery. I mean, these are just normal things that happen in any case. And uh, once again, this relates back to the blackmail, but it shouldn't be done. It can't be done. And that's why it's going on appeal. But the reason that I'm telling this and the reason I'm making this video is, number one, our justice system is a mess. Our insurance companies are screwing victims left, right, and center. And the courts are ignoring the rules of insurance and the laws and screwing accident victims left and right. Now, I've run into so many Liberty Mutual victims on the Internet, and they write me these messages, and they tell me the stories, and they've watched my videos, and they are just completely screwed when it comes to claims. And Liberty Mutual is like making money over and over and over and ripping off victims. But the courts are also ignoring the rules of insurance, which actually, if any judge engages in insurance fraud, they can lose their seat on the bench. Now, in 1989, I believe it was, it was either 89 or 85, I think it was 89, there was an old judge named Paul Garrity who used to be a judge in Boston. And when he retired, inside Faneuil Hall, which is this historical landmark inside Boston, he opened up a arbitra uh, an arbitration mediation um place where you were supposed to go instead of going to court to settle your case and then not have to wait out the long court process and, and it supposedly it was supposed to be better but what binding arbitration is is there's no reversal from his decision and what I ended up finding out because I had been in an accident way back in the 90s was that the insurance company back then had offered me 20000 but I had about 40000 in damages. So I was trying to get the insurance company to settle between 20 and 40. And so we decided to go to arbitration. Now what they did, in, and they tricked you in arbitration, is, which is unlawful, they took that offer off the table. And then they said, now we start back at zero, and we'll go from zero to whatever, and we'll hear you. And what happened is they don't even let you speak, and they cut the award down to 12 from 20. And that's how they made money. They got paid by the insurance companies to help screw victims and rip them off. So whatever that 8000 was that I did not get, they probably got and pocketed that. And I didn't get it. And I ended up with 12. So I went back into court and fought them on different aspects of the law to get it undone because binding is binding and you can't undo it. But because we were tricked and deceived, I did it through a different clause in the law and tried to get it undone. But I said to Paul Garrity in that meeting, if you don't undo this, it's going to cost you everything. You took 8000 out of me, but I will make sure you not only do this to nobody else, but you don't get to keep what you took from me. And he laughed. He was an ass. He was arrogant. He thought he was the king of the world. And he just looked at me and went, yeah, go ahead, whatever. So I went to the Boston Globe, and I showed him what happened and showed him what they did. And they ran a front-page Boston Globe article on April 19th. I'll never forget it. My picture was across the paper. And this is before the Internet and before Google and before whatever. And it came out, and back in that day, I, I don't know how many million people got the Boston Globe. It wiped him out. I would go into Faneuil Hall, and people knew who I was from the front of that, and they were thanking me left, right, and center for exposing him, because he was ripping... 
uh, that meeting that we had took about an hour, an hour and a half. He was doing about six to seven victims a day. Bam, bam, bam. Cutting down all these settlements, making himself money through the back door, saving the insurance company eight to however many thousand per victim and screwing everybody. And they were setting him up left, right, and center. So my article was circulated and everybody saw it and it was just overwhelming and whatever. Now, I never got my 8000 back, and it it stung because I was newlywed, and we had started in business, and blah, 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 and I was injured, and I had lost all this money. But I lived, and I was fine, but I had said to him, you're just an idiot. I can't believe you did this. Now, I never wish anybody to die or anything bad like that, but he was a drinker, and he was he was he drank and drove, and he had been in an accident, and somebody had said that to me when I was out in the street walking in Faneuil Hall and whatever. They said, you know what? He hit me. Um, I live in the He lived in Commercial Wharf, which is this very luxurious condominium complex like around the corner on the waterfront. Gorgeous, gorgeous place, like big bucks. And he had driven drunk and, and struck the driver, and the driver was showing me what he had done to his car. And so Paul had, you know, a habit of, I don't know, drinking and driving and whatever. But he ended up dying. Um, but he died a fraud having lost everything. And his name went down after he got caught being an insurance fraud scammer. Because you cannot do that. And the judge in the case where her name was Maria Lopez. And when I filed the case against him, Maria Lopez did not rule with the rules of insurance knowing he had committed an insurance fraud. And she got unseated from the bench. And if you Google Maria Lopez, she was unseated for all kinds of judicial misconduct. But I'm one of the last ones that turned her in for judicial misconduct for that ruling and for not applying the law that he engaged in committing insurance fraud by underpaying me in my claim. So everybody that participated in that got wiped out. And this is, again, before the Internet. So now we're here in this case. And, and if you, again, Google Liberty Mutual and how, much, how many people they screw and how much whatever. But when the courts and the judges get caught underpaying the claims and getting involved in it, bam, way more than a hand slap. Because it's a crime to get involved in com committing insurance fraud. So I actually never thought Liberty Mutual was going to dismiss this case. I just didn't. I, I, I totally believed the court was going to... I even offered the court less than the default was for to just try and get them to pay me. Thinking they're just going to do this because it's so much easier. And they couldn't really bring it to trial because the court had undervalued the car and they were in trouble for that and the girl lied under oath and perjured herself and she would make a terrible witness because if it did go to trial I would just impeach her credibility by proving she lied to to go to the other case to the other part of the case so it was the courts and the judges responsibility to take hold of that case and say Here's an accident victim. We already know what she did to someone else that committed insurance fraud. I don't want to do that over this little case. Are you kidding me? Just pay her and settle. But on December 9th, it was dismissed. So I am appealing this case, and it's going to appellate court in Boston. And I'm, I'm stuck right where I was, you know, in the 90s. And what's sad is that no victim should have to go through this and no insurance company should be getting away with getting it to this point where some victim has to do this. Now my situation is a little bit different because I've been blackmailed and of course we know that there's no judges on my Christmas list and they're still mad at me because I won four and a half million dollars and they dismissed that case and I put it up on YouTube and they've never recovered from it and it's not up to any other judge or any other person to retaliate against me 
for something somebody else did because that doesn't work, especially when it's a claim of insurance. And just the fact that I'm smart and I outsmarted lawyers and I outsmarted an insurance company and I obeyed the law and they're not does not make me the wrong person. It makes me the smart and right person. But you would think that at this stage of the game with what it has cost everybody that's been a player, nobody would ever violate again, especially in insurance fraud and when when the judge dismissed the case my jaw was on the floor I could not even believe that he was doing that so I filed for the appeal today and it's going to be going forward and I am going to be putting it up here as to what happens and we just you get dealt some cards that you don't like in life and they're not fair and they're not right but for for Massachusetts, which is very corrupt, and for victims of injuries, I am fighting this because everyone that lets someone get away with it without saying anything or doing anything makes it one weaker link in the chain. So if, if they get away with that and nobody does it, they'll, the next time they'll screw someone another thousand and another thousand and another thousand. And pretty soon, you're going to have a victim that's hurt and injured with a total car that can only buy a moped in return because everybody's taken a chunk and not getting the victim what they're due under the law and our laws are disappearing and falling apart and Liberty Mutual is one of the worst companies of fraud and ripping people off that I've even ever heard about the victims that I have run into on the internet while my I have Liberty Mutual cases up on two different sites um, but I'm putting it up on this site because I want people to follow where this went from the beginning to where it is now and to be updated and as the appeal goes I'm naming everybody and this is going to be big I'm everybody that violates the law and engages in this conspiracy to commit insurance fraud to underpay this claim I'm turning them into the bar and I'm turning them into for judicial misconduct and that's what I did back then I turned it judge Paul Garrity was retired and so there was no way to turn him into anything so I turned him into the newspaper and judge Lopez I was in a pile of complaints that she had against her for her judicial misconduct and she was um, cited for like abusing her power indiscretion um, if you google her there's like all these different reasons of things that she did on different cases where she violated her oath as a judge and a judge is supposed to be impartial has to apply and obey the laws that are in place and cannot make a ruling based on discrimination or dislike or trying to get even with somebody that's a friend of theirs that's not how you get to wear a robe and while I'm greatly against judges that get to be appointed they should be elected so that when they screw up we don't have to be stuck with them year after year and they have to earn the right to have that uniform but a lot of them become so they're so they think they're they are above the law and they they think they just are everything and it isn't until they're come face to face with the truth that they freak out and they don't like the internet and they don't like all the laws they only like the laws that work for them and the rest of the laws they don't want even to be allowed to be here they I, I noticed that bad lawyers and bad judges only like to apply the laws they like but they don't like to apply the laws of the Commonwealth and the laws of the state and they like to play with all the rest of the laws and for people that weren't aware of how corrupt our system was they are now because they see it all over the place because we're allowed to expose it on the internet and I even filed I knew exactly what I was doing when this case started to go south and I even filed a motion to seal this record because no attorney filed for an appearance because Liberty Mutual defaulted on their demand and because the pleadings were so messy and just they were so embarrassing if I was a judge or a lawyer 
I would want this case under cement because to, to know that I did not do the right thing from day one, I wouldn't even know how to put my robe on and tie it because it, it's so embarrassing. And they didn't do that. And they think they're all above the law. And because they're in a little group, they think they're going to, you know, get away with it. And it's not going to work like that because the real world and the laws are still in place in the books. And when it comes to insurance fraud, you don't get away with it. Now, my other case that for the four and a half million dollars with the Marriott, it was an unlawful dismissal and the judge was in uh, wrong for doing it and he violated his oath. But in a civil matter like that, um, he really put the burden on the Commonwealth. And in other words, if I had wanted to go after the Commonwealth for him being unlawful, that would have been my next thing to do. But because they, because that money from Marriott and blackmailers was so dirty and so scary, both my ex-husband and me and my current fiance, we all just decided it was such, such dirty money. Even though I won it and even though I was entitled to it, they would have put me under a bridge to get rid of it, to get rid of me rather than see that I have it. So if I ever had to get paid it, I would have been paid it, and then the next day I would have been somewhere. And I, that's how dirty they are. And I just, I never even wanted to be a millionaire. We fought that case of sexual harassment at the Marriott and the other two victims, assuming we'd get about 200000 each. When you sue for all these millions of dollars, it doesn't mean anything. You're not really thinking you're going to meet, you're going to get that. But you sue for that so that you can settle for way less. But when the Marriott attorneys never answered the complaint under court rules at all and another 30 days lapsed, that's when we filed a motion for a default and we should have been given a default. And because we weren't represented by an attorney and we won pro se, the court was humiliated, the judges were humiliated, and they... Did Marriott pay them off or not to, to, to dismiss it? I have no idea. But they dismissed it, and that was unlawful. And they have to live with that fraud, which is so different from engaging in insurance fraud, because insurance fraud becomes a crime if you know that the party is due the money and they're, you're not v ruling in accordance with the law to get them paid you become a conspirator in insurance fraud. So for the Paul Garrity case in the 90s and for um, the judge that did that, they got in big, big trouble. And is that going to happen in this case? I would think so. And I, it's just begun. I haven't even turned in my judicial misconduct, but I'm going to and the attorney misconduct, and you turn that into the bar that they engaged in a conspiracy, and you see what happens. Um, in a right world, they'd all be sharing a cell. Uh, in today's world, they're probably going to get a hand slap. But because of the Internet and because it's out here and it's public and it's a public record that anyone can access, it's going to be well known, and whoever's involved in it is going to be known just like it happened back then. And I'm really sad because all I ever wanted was the amount of money I was due under the law, and I never asked for any more. And when you have people that are so jaded and so disturbed in their own minds that they can't even see reason to their own title and position, and they want to rule to rip you off, to settle some score of that judge that's mad at me, what are you going to do? The only thing you can do is stay true to your core, go forward, keep it impersonal, tell the truth, and file it. And that's just what I did. And appeals are a long process. They take almost a year, and I will be updating as it goes along. Um, but we'll have to see what happens because um, this was this was injustice served on a master plate 
and every one of the attorneys and the judge and anybody that touched this case that didn't help me and obey the law goes down and they get reported. And I don't know what the punishment's going to be in today's world. Back then it was drastic and I don't know about now. But all I can do is do what I'm allowed to do and I'm going to. And for Liberty Mutual, shame on you. And I hope that this case makes such a splash that you get noted in my, and people use this case as you underpaying victims the money that they're due. And so that any victim that's getting ripped off gets to use me as a reference in this case. And that's why it's getting put up here on the internet. So that when a victim needs to know that you underpay both the car and the bodily injury, they get to use this and say, you've, you have a history of screwing people. And that's why this case is the landmark. And they can use it to help get paid what they are due. And in this world, if we don't fight for what we are allowed to have under the law and we just let people take that away from us for no reason, we are going to run around here like a bunch of barbarians. And the only people that will have any power is somebody that works for the court or the government or a police. And everyone else, which is 90% of the world, we will be helpless. So we have to put justice back into the system, laws back into order, into the books, and people held accountable. And everyone remember, nobody is above the law, including judges. And in my dreams, all those jerks share a cell. But in the real world, I don't know what's going to happen. But in your head, you have to just know that by doing the right thing, somehow some way they get what they deserve. And I don't ever worry about wondering what that is. I just deal what I have to deal and move on and the chips fall where they may. And it, it usually works. I didn't wish for Paul Garrity to die, but he was in his 60s with a liver problem and he was a huge drinker. And by the time you're 60, all that alcohol, not so much. Um, and for Maria Lopez, schmuck, what are you going to do? She had her choice. And, and the thing is, there's a really mean judge in, in Framingham called Judge Carroll. Women judges, I don't know what's wrong with them. It's like they're missing the gene that makes them female. And sometimes a woman judge is worse than 10 bad men judges. And I don't know what it is. I don't know if they are mean because they're not good at home and they come into a robe and they get all that, I'm going to ruin everyone's life. I don't even know what it is. But they're so mean and so bad that they don't belong even in the courtroom because they can't have the compassion they need to make the decisions that that are read in rules under the court. She was giving some guy a hard time. Why didn't you come today? Why didn't you do this? Why didn't you? It's like... You know, life happens, and if you don't have a car, and if things go wrong, you don't even know. And it was like, I, I just couldn't believe what a witch she was. But she was a witch like that when I was in there before. And I was in another court a few years ago, and there was another judge, and she was mean, mean, mean. I couldn't believe it. And so I, I don't know what it is. I mean, I don't like to categorize all bad men, all bad women. I think there's good in every 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 kind of thing, but I, but this one, oh my God. And, and, and Maria Lopez, crazy, absolutely crazy. And to anybody who is a judge or who's going to engage insurance fraud, make sure you dot your I's and cross your T's because it's a big deal. And if you need to Google it, Google Paul Garrity, Google Maria Lopez, and then this case will be up soon and you can Google that and whatever happens to them, Oh my God. And if it does happen to them, I'm putting, I'm going to be the first one putting it up on Google under their names if they got unseated from the bench because you cannot engage insurance fraud. It's just against the law. It's a crime. And it's something they can't un, the law is so concrete that they can't say, 
oh, we'll just do this, we'll do that. It's a crime. So if you have the robe on, you are supposed to not commit crimes. You're supposed to hold people responsible that that do that that commit them. You can't commit it yourself. You are supposed to be above that. And when you're not above that, you don't get to keep the robe. Have a good night, everybody.